Another year has gone by, and another glorious season of League of Legends has arrived. What wonders will await us this year? Perhaps a new Void Champion will be released? Maybe something that will allow you to mind control the enemy champion for a short time? I don't know. I think that would be neat. But one thing is certain with the start of every new League season, and that thing is change. Now if you're like me, you hate change. You're scared of things becoming different and have a hard time adapting to it. But what do these changes mean for our beloved Yordle Poppy? Do we take new ruins? Are there new items that we should be building? The answer to all these questions is yes. Poppy's build has changed this season, but fear not, for I have been restlessly testing out new Poppy builds and mechanics over at twitch.tv slash dacnomaniac every Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and I'm here today to show you what I've found. This time around, they added new elemental dragon, uh... Look, there's a Hextech one, and that's it, as well as adding some new ruins and items that, well, are for the most part balanced. Today we are taking a look at the biggest changes to our beloved hammer-swinging Yordle, who can pin you against a wall and bonk you into submission. I am Dacnomaniac, 1.3 million mastery poppy main with a peak at Diamond 1 last season spamming poppy jungle like crazy. And this season, nothing's changed. But don't worry, this season we're gonna get masters and goddamn are we on the right path. And with this guide, I'm sure you will too. Keep in mind for this guide I will only be going over season 12 changes that affect Poppy's build and playstyle, I won't be going over abilities and combos. If you want a complete in-depth look at all that, and how to play her, check out my ultimate Poppy guide which I'll link right here. And lastly, if you found this guide helpful, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe because I have 10 8-legged children I need to feed and come on look at them, they're adorable. By far the biggest change this season is the addition of, well, it was two, new elemental drakes. The Hextech and the Chemtech, but actually they just announced they are removing the Chemtech until further notice, maybe forever? I don't know, I'm a League player, you expect me to read things? I'll still mention Chemtech Drake just in case they bring it back in the future, but just keep in mind it's gone until who knows when. Hextech gives you 6% attack speed and ability haste per kill, and Chemtech gave you up to 5% more damage against champions with more current health than you. Hextech Soul gives you a static shiv effect every few seconds that also slows enemies hit, and Chemtech Soul gives you a scion passive where you resurrect after death, and rapidly decay health until you die again. Both of these are great for Poppy, in my opinion Chemtech was the biggest bonus, granted she already gets tankier the lower health she is, giving her more damage as well was just fantastic. And of course, with the Hextech Drake, the rift will also change. Hextech will add these hex gates that can transport you across the map. It's really kind of silly, and I always forget to use them. And Chemtech added this fogger on the jungle that made you camouflage. This was the main reason they removed Chemtech. It kind of just ruined the game for everybody. But those are just the things that affect everyone. With the new season comes new updates to items and ruins, and these have affected Poppy's build in a significant way. As I stated before, I've hard swapped to maining jungle Poppy because the top lane is in a bit of a weird spot for her now. Don't get me wrong, Poppy is still a great top laner and dominates most matchups. Feel free to pick her if you know who you're against. But if your first pick, I'd advise against it. There are so many counter picks that will just make your life miserable. The biggest change to Poppy's playstyle is also the downfall of her in top lane, and that, my friends, is this new keystone called First Strike. This little beauty here has replaced Omnistone because, let's be honest, I saw maybe three people take Omnistone the entire year it was out. With First Strike, it grants you 10% more damage to champions for a few seconds after hitting them. It also grants you bonus gold based on a percentage of the damage that was dealt during that time. But, like the name suggests, you have to hit them first or you get nothing and it goes on cooldown for 25 to 15 seconds based on level. This is the keystone I've been taking in the jungle 100% of the time. I know I get a lot of questions and pings from my teammates, but trust me, the results speak for themselves. Let me explain. The job of Poppy Jungle is to obviously gank and make picks during and before team fights. Your farming is really weak on Poppy Jungle, so most of your money needs to come from ganks. This makes up for the lack of gold you get for farming for doing what you do best. Murder. I'm averaging about 800 to even 1300 bonus gold on a good game, and that's about 4.5 bonus kills worth of gold just from your ruins. That's pretty bonkers if you ask me. And like I said, the results speak for themselves, so before you doubt it, try it out for yourself. The damage and the bonus gold will make you an insane jungler. Next, since we are sticking with the inspiration tree, Hex Flash will be your next go-to. I took Boots for a bit, but waiting that long for Boots feels really bad, and Hex Flash makes for some creative ganks. Plus, you have the security of using your regular Flash off cooldown to make all the Flash wall stun ganks you need. Next, we take Future's Market to make the gold advantage even greater. Sure, there is a tax if you go negative in gold, but with the first strike you will make it back the next time you gank. And lastly, we take Cosmic Insight, because it's ridiculous. 46 seconds taken off your flash, 14 seconds off on your smite cooldown, and 8 seconds on your sweeper. It's too good for a jungler not to take. Secondaries, I take Cheap Shot for more burst damage, and Relentless Hunter for greater ganking potential. 
Of course, you can still go the old Dark Harvest build like this, there's nothing wrong with it. And then there's the tank options, with these ruins here. I've had to run these like maybe once or twice, and they work out great if your team is full of Cassidens or Yones and Jinxes who can hyper carry the game but need a good frontline. Aside from jungle, there haven't really been any ruin changes for top or support poppy. For top lane, we run this, and for support, we usually go with this. And if you want explanations about all these, again, my ultimate poppy guide I mentioned before, seriously, it has everything about poppy you will ever need to know. And now let's get on with the item changes. Much like the ruin changes, there was one big item change that actually affects both top and jungle poppy, and that is the glorious item Winter's Approach. This has been a major change for poppy and has helped her with her biggest issue, and that is mana. Poppy runs out of mana super fast, but with this item right here, it fixes everything. More in the top lane than the jungle, I'll admit I never really buy this in the jungle, but I'll take it every time in the top lane. It's a tank form of a tier item that at max stacks transforms into Fimble Winter, which grants you bonus HP based on 8% of your mana and a passive effect called Everlasting, which consumes 3% of your current mana whenever you slow or immobilize a champion to grant you a shield for 100 to 200 base, plus 5% of your mana for 3 seconds. Which, yes, will proc on your Q, it will proc on your W if you nope someone, it will proc on your E, and it will proc on your R. Basically, everything Poppy does will proc this shield. Not to mention it procs on Frozen Gauntlet passive, so you're able to proc it with a ranged shield toss. Other than that, this item, nothing's really changed for jungle and toppy. You'll still build Divine Sunderer 90% of the time unless you need a tank item, which if you are top, you will build Gauntlet, and jungle you build Come Tank. Which they actually did change to be like the old Righteous Glory with an active that gives you a move speed toward champions and towers. Then, after a short delay, we'll release a Shockwave Burst that slows enemies. It also has a Dead Man's effect that, when fully stacked, causes an explosion on the next attack dealing bonus damage based on 1% of your health, and 3% of your move speed. Final builds for the top should look something like this, and for the jungle, something like this. As for support poppy, well, I don't really know much about that, but I have made it a focus to master the role of support poppy and make an in-depth guide about it soon. Poppy's not the best support, but it is a hard counter in certain situations, but from what I've seen, even Shroud is the mythic you want to take. It's the new item that has Abyssal Mask's old passive that grants you and your team 9% damage to units you mobilize. But if you need to protect your carry, take Locket as your mythic and finish it off with a build like this. <sighs> Boy, that's a lot of information. I'm glad they're mixing it up the season, and I'm glad Poppy was affected by the changes in a positive way. I'm really enjoying them. If this helped you again, I would appreciate it if you subscribed, because I have an important announcement here pretty soon involving a certain sport that involves a magical cat. So stick around for that, and come stop by my stream. Again, I'm there like every night playing Poppy. It's honestly one of the best ways to learn Poppy is to watch it live being played by me. Geologists have proven it.